This is the One Win Solo Vent Bivy Tent, a crossover between a tent and a bivy bag. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this product, keep watching. Before we get started, I do want to thank One Win for sending out the Solo Vent Bivy Tent so that I could share it with you. So, this is not the first product from One Win that I've uh, reviewed. In fact, they've sent me out a few other products. I'll put links to them in the end of this video. And I've purchased a few of their products. And reason being is I'm consistently impressed with the high quality compared with the price that you're paying for the products from One Win. All right, now what I want to do just before I take the tent out of its sack is just talk about it in its compressed state. So everything you get or everything you need minus a couple of poles or some way of erecting it, I'll talk about that in a minute, is in here. So you get the tent, you get the sack, and you get 10 tent pegs, which you'll see in a moment. All together, all told, in this bag, it comes in at 2.2 pounds or one kilogram. Now I say you need tent peg or tent poles or something. I have a pair of trekking poles with me today. They're not necessary. You can use sticks. We'll talk more about that. And you can erect the, or put this tent up on a ridge line between two trees. In fact, the end uh, cords or guy lines are long enough that if you have two trees relatively close together, you don't need a separate guy line. You may be able to attach it directly to the trees, depending again how close they are together. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is just take it out of the sack, stretch it under the ground here, which is relatively flat. It's about the best I could do in my immediate area. We'll set it up and we'll talk about it. All right, just to save a few moments time on video, I took the tent out of its stuff, stuff sack stretched it out on the ground and pinned the four corner down with the included tent pegs. Now I'm going to be giving you close-ups of everything so you can see what's all involved here. But the first thing you're going to want to do after selecting where your site is, and basically what you're looking for is one, which was the direction of the wind. So what do you want your view to be when you're looking out it in the morning, especially? All important is looking above you, looking for any widow makers or anything that can come down on top of your head, or you don't want that to happen, of course. And because the piece of ground that I'm on is not perfectly flat, surprise, I'm out in the woods, I have a slight uphill incline in this direction, so I want my head to be at this end. Now this is important because the tent does have a head end and a foot end. The head end is a little taller than the tail than the foot end is, as you'll see when it's fully set up. So you do want to orient your tent or lay it out in the orientation you want prior to doing the rest of the setup. So that's where I'm at right now. So the next step would I have to take my trekking poles, which I have laid down on each end, set them up and guide them out. So I have the tent pegs and two extra guy lines in the little stuff sack. And we'll take this. Now, what's nice about this, and again, you'll see some close-ups in a minute, is on the ridge line, which is actually reinforced nicely, there is a ribbon tie-out, a ring, quite a heavy-duty ring, and the guy line. Now I'm going to speak to the guy lines in a bit more in a minute. But that ring is great because it allows me to set it right over top of my trekking pole. So it's actually intended for doing that. And now I can run this out to the distance I want. And I don't need it to go all that far. So I'll just have to untangle it first a little bit. There we go. All right, that's better. Now I can run the guy line out and pull it up. A little height adjustment tensioners on it. Now that may or may not be my last setup. We'll come around, of course, after we get it more or less set up to finish it off. More or less straight now. And the tail end. Pretty much the same, but I'm not gonna be able to get the trekking pole at this height, so I do have to adjust my trekking pole down. And this is one of those trekking poles that only has a certain amount of adjustment. And unfortunately, the trekking pole is taller. But, yeah, that's a bit too tall. Look at that. All right, there's a good... Uh, Good lesson to learn right here. The trekking poles I chose to bring out today only shorten to, well, this is as short as they can get it, which means I'm going to have a quick look around and see if I can find a stick to replace the trekking pole on this end. All right, so here's an example of being aware of your resources that are around you. There was a nice stick laid not too far from here. I picked it up, turned it around, and realized 
there's a tree right at the tail end of my tent. So all I needed to do was take the ridge line or the guy line from that end, wrap it around the trunk of the tree and put a taut line hitch on it to hold it up. It's working as well, if not better in this case, I think, than a trekking pole would have. So there's the basic structure of the tent. Now, I'm going to be going around behind and opening up the vent itself. There's a vent on the back, and then there is a flap, which is also an awning on the front. So let's start with the awning on the front. Grab a tent peg. Now the awning is zippered down and Velcro kind of keep it in place and has guy lines of its own. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the guy line and the tent peg for the foot end, but on the other end I'm actually going to use that trekking pole that I did not put into action on the tail end. And you'll see how that's going to work out. Uh, stretch my guy line out. That looks reasonable. Now grab my trekking pole, come to the head end. It's one of the nice things about this. I do have options in the way I'm going to set it up. So at this end, I'm going to use a trekking pole and uh, I think I need to extend the trekking pole upwards a little bit. Let's try that. Yeah, I think that works out pretty good. So on the corners of the awning are the same things that are on the ridge lines. There is a tie out, and in this case there's an elasticized piece of shock cord, but again the ring and the guy line. So that ring I can set right over the top of my trekking pole and guy this out. which will take a second. I know I'm off camera. I'll be back in a moment. Get the guy line ready for use. All right, there we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Find something that doesn't have a rock to push it into. Okay, so I have the front of my tent set up, but I'll just, I'll take the camera on back and show you the vent as I sent it up. So now on the back of the tent, there is a flap which has a vent of mesh, fine mosquito mesh running along its length. It has guy lines in each end, and this will form the ventilation. You have to remember now, this is a single wall tent. It does not have an inner and an outer. So you want as much ventilation as you can get while still being protected from the weather because condensation can and probably will be an issue. I'll explain in a moment. So I can tie that out. Now it's hooked. Give it a little press in. Now come to the other end. And this will probably be my last guy out point. And that should work. All right, now basically the tent is set up and ready to go. I'll take the camera off the tripod, we'll take a walk around, and I'll be able to show you its key features and how it fits me when I get inside. Start at the head end of the tent on the open side and then I'll work my way around from here. So to start with, I'll show you where the trekking pole is inserted. There is the ridge line running down here, tab or piece of nylon webbing the ring for the tent pole. Now, I may as well point this out right now. This is not the guy line that came with this tent. I found that the guy lines that came with it, at least for me, we'll talk more about that in a moment, were too short to get a reasonable 
length for me to tie it up. In fact, they were short enough that I would not have been able to do what I did at the other end here, which is to use that tree to tie it out in. So I did add guy lines, kept the originals. I have them in my pocket. I can use them as extensions if there had in fact been two trees and I wanted to guy it out completely. So from that point, you can see that there are loops along the ridge line, three, not including the ends, of course, which means you could run a ridge line right through the center and not you and just use two trees at whatever distance, well, whatever distance you have line to stretch between and not have to use poles at all for this part of the setup. This is the awning and main flap. It has a zipper, as you can see, running along here, matching the zipper running down the side. There's Velcro to keep it closed if you don't want to zipper it. And uh, you probably may not even want to zipper it at any point, but it's uh, there if you wish, especially if the weather gets bad, you can reach the zipper pull from inside and outside. It has twin pulls, as you can see right here. Let's follow that along to the end. You can see where I have the other trekking pole holding it up, a bit of shock cord, small ring to place over the tip of the trekking pole and down. Now this is the stock uh, line here that's on the tent here. And uh, by the way, rip stop nylon. I'll put the weight of this in the video description. The one win logo. Now, yes, it should be a little bit tied out a little bit more to get rid of this. And uh, um, that's well, we can make that change right now. Just want to come down to the foot end, same arrangement. I'll just pull this out and see what that does for the awning. Yeah, that helped a little bit. Foot end, as you can see here, I'll be giving you the dimensions in a moment when I get inside just so you can appreciate it. Same ring, tied out using a taut line hitch around the tree. Now let's move around the back. And of course, there's the vent being tied out to lift the flap off. You could, if you really felt the need to, drop that down and really close yourself in if the weather was that bad. But if you do that, you will get wet from the inside just from perspiration, if nothing else. So uh, you're better off leaving the vent open and getting as much air as you can in here. And this is based on my experience, which I'll share with you in a moment. One last thing to show you is another vent. So this is a vent right at the peak of the head end, and it has a little stand up right here, piece of Velcro, hold it open, and a bit of mesh up inside. So lots of ventilation, and it really does need it. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is set the camera back up on the tripod. I'll get inside, we'll talk a little bit more about its features and its dimensions. All right, I'm just about to get inside of the tent, and I wanted to give you a little bit of the specifications for it, just enough so you get an idea of just how much size you actually have, but you'll get a better idea once I do get inside. And of course, all of this will be in the video description uh, as well. Now, first thing I wanna point out is the tent that One Win sent me came from its Canadian distributor, not from its American distributor. Well, that's no surprise, of course, at all. And what I've discovered in doing a little bit of research is this is a first generation of the Solo Vent tent. There is a, actually a second generation of this. Now, there's not a lot of difference between the two, but one of the bigger differences is the floor in the second generation or upgraded tent uses a heavier nylon than the walls of the tent. So this has the original floor in it, probably like a gram or two lighter, but it's also a little bit more prone to having sticks or whatever coming through. So I say that for a reason. I don't think functionally it's going to change anything for me at all. But in using this, I like to have a little bit of a ground sheet. In fact, I have a little tiny poly tarp that if I was staying out in the nights that I did stay on it, I used the poly tarp for that purpose. So um, I just point that out. If you're ordering it from the U.S. or as the stocks are used up in Canada, it will come with the stronger floor. I'd still recommend a, some type of a, a, a footprint to use underneath it anyway, just for a little bit of protection and additional waterproofness, although it should not need it according to the rating that one wind gives the tent itself. Now, as far as dimensions go, the length of this tent is uh, 82 inches, which is 210 centimeters. So it's well over six feet tall. That's about seven feet in length. I can 
probably figure that out if I really tried hard enough. The width is about 33 inches and that would be at the head end because not only does it slant downwards towards your feet, it also narrows in a little bit. So the most of your room is at the top end of the tent, which makes sense because they're trying to minimize the amount of fabric and therefore weight in this tent at all. And at its highest, it is 39.4 inches, I think it is, 100 centimeters. So that's the amount of height you get inside. Now, it does have the bathroom style floor. So they're all the way around. It does come up a little bit so that you, you know, if you ended up in a bit of a wash and you had some water, as long as you're careful, you should not get water inside of the tent. All right. Now, let's get inside, so I'll be able to bring you in in a moment. So there is a zipper that is two-directional, and it goes all the way down to the far end and up again. The 1,600 square holes per inch, wow, that is small. That's what the mosquito netting is. There's nothing getting through that at all. I can't imagine. Uh, this can be rolled up. There are toggles along the edge of the door here for this uh, mesh fabric here and as well you can do the same thing with the roof. If you don't want to use the roof as an awning then you don't have to. You can have it wide open. But uh, I'm going to get in side. Actually I'm going to roll this up because if I don't you probably won't see me. So give me a moment to roll this up toggle it out of the way. All right, I just had to do one toggle in order for you to be able to see me inside. Now, I'm gonna bring the camera inside with me in a moment so you can get an appreciation from what it looks like inside, but I will tell you there's one little pocket for whatever it is, cell phone, flashlight, headlamp, whatever it is you're looking for to keep organized, that is actually raised up off of the floor just a little bit. It runs along the bottom of that back vent. So I'm gonna get in and sit up just to give you an idea what it looks like in here. Now, this is as far to the head end as I can get. Now, I'm not a big man. I'm only five foot 10, 185 pounds, we'll say on average, but I'm sitting up and my head is coming in contact with the roof. All right, now the reason I'm mentioning this is I have seen some people mention that there's plenty of room to be in this tent. Um, I don't find that to be the case. Like I said, I'm only an average sized person and I'm sitting on the ground. The nights I spent in this, I used a four inch thick air mattress to come inside, which there was plenty of room for, but there is no way you can sit up effectively in this tent and not have and not touch the roof of it. I point that out for a reason. Every time I did try to sit up, um, I got wet and I got wet from perspiration on the inside wall. Not a big deal. It's not like there was a lot of condensation, but there was some. So I even had it, I had it pretty much set up like this in porch mode for maximum air ventilation. There wasn't a lot of wind that evening, but apparently there was a lot of wetness and dew and humidity. But it was, um, yeah, it, it was something to consider is you likely will get wet. We'll talk more about that in a moment. However, having said that, there is still plenty of room when you stretch out with an air mattress to lay down and I am, all right, I'm about four inches from the head end and I still have about 10 inches, maybe a little less to the foot end. So there is plenty of room to sleep in here, but there's not an excessive amount of room, but that'll come into who I think this is for in a moment. All right, one last thing to do before we wrap this video up is for me to bring you inside the tent so you can get an appreciation of what it's like to be on the inside. All right, I'm laying down inside of the tent. You can see down to the foot end. There's enough space, like I said, but there's not a lot of space. The back ventilation, very much appreciated. I can share that with you. I have the mosquito netting just kind of wrapped up there, hanging somewhat draping. And the awning. That's got to be one of the nicest features here is this awning. As you can see, look at my view. Isn't this wonderful? This time of year, especially wide open. I don't even need the mosquito netting, but you know, it's nice to have that. We're out of, outside of the mosquito season right now. I really think the awning is probably the best feature for this tent. I'm just show you the foot end again. Should be able to see the Velcros. Now, one thing I didn't mention, but I think should be obvious is if the weather starts to turn bad, you can obviously drop this awning down. You can zip it close completely, not recommend it because you will get wet from condensation on the inside. 
but you certainly can lower this down and maximize your protection from the rain as well. All right, a few closing thoughts for the One Win Solo Vent Bivy Tent. Who is this product for? Well, I think the name says it all. It is a bivy tent, a hybrid between a being a bivy bag and an actual true tent. It sets up like a tent, but it's so small that it's closer to bivy bag in nature. So if what you're looking for is a minimalist setup, something that gives you a lot of the features of a tent, but all the compact lightweightness of a bivy bag with just a little bit more protection than a bivy bag obviously does by itself, then this may be something to consider. It is small. But having said that, I spent two nights in it, comfortably sleeping. I did mention, though, you will get wet if there's a lot of condensation on the inside. Not a big deal, just something to be aware of. So do maximize the ventilation at every opportunity just to make sure that you do stay dry. But you can't beat that view. Waking up in the morning and looking out with that view, then that's something that a lot of the freestanding closed-in tents just don't offer. So this is closer in a lot of ways to using a small tarp but having the protection away from the bugs that the bug netting provides you. So it is a nice combination but again it is small so if that's what you're looking for if you're okay with that then this may be something to look at. Personally I find this a bit too small mostly because maybe my age and my arthritic shoulders and back and all that type of thing I just found it a bit challenging to get in and out of. Once in I was comfortable, slept well in this. There was not, I mean, there was plenty of room. It's not like I was rubbing up against the tent everywhere. Sitting up in it, yeah, I was. My head was starting to come into contact. It was really hard to avoid doing that. But still, overall, considering its weight and its compactness and its simplicity, this may be something that I would pack out when I'm just trying to move fast and light and looking for a luxurious room isn't on my agenda. Okay, if you have any comments or questions about the One Win Solo Vent Bivy Tent, put them in the comment section below. The links and the specifications for it I'll be putting in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.